Good morning, ninth graders. Uh, today we're going to talk about the human circulatory systems. We're chugging right along, moving through our body systems here. Um, the human circulatory system has a couple different parts to be familiar with. Obviously, we have blood. The job of the blood is to transport oxygen, nutrients, disease-fighting substances, and heat. The heart pumps the blood through the blood vessels, and the blood vessels hold the blood inside your body. You have four different parts of the blood. You have red blood cells. They're in charge of transporting oxygen throughout the body. They do not contain a nucleus, which is why they're usually drawn like that flat donut thing. Uh, you have white blood cells. They're part of the immune system. They're charged with fighting off infections. Uh, you also have platelets. Platelets are fragments of blood cells used to clot the blood. And then you have what's called plasma. And plasma is the clear fluid that all the blood cells float in. So the analogy that I always use is this, if you've ever been someplace that has, or you can picture it, even if you've never been there maybe, and that has um, like a water park kind of thing that has a lazy river, think about the lazy river. And you have mostly red floats. So if you're looking at the lazy river from way up above, let's say you're in a drone or a helicopter or whatever, there's so many red blood cells in the lazy river, or so many red floats, that the the lazy river itself looks red. Throughout there, there will be a couple of big white ones, but not enough big white ones to make it look white. And those are your white blood cells. And then sometimes when you're in the lazy river along the edges um, and throughout the lazy river, you might see um, deflated floats along the side, the ones that are broken, the ones that are just parts of floats or have a hole in them, they don't hold air anymore or something like that. Those would be like the equivalent of your platelets. The platelets are just the, platelets are just the fragments of blood. And then the plasma would be the water in the lazy river. So you don't even really, if you're way up high above the water, above the lazy river, you won't even really see the water if, there, if there's enough um, blood cells in it, excuse me, if there's enough blood cells in it to make it look red. You have three different types of blood vessels. Arteries carry oxygen-rich blood away from the heart. That's how you remember that. Arteries away. A-A, arteries away. They are thick muscular walls to withstand the pressure because the heart is pumping the blood pretty fast. And so they have to, the arteries have to be nice and thick so that they don't explode accidentally. Um, veins carry uh, deoxygenated or oxygen-poor blood. Um, back to the heart. So the arteries carry blood away from the heart and the veins carry blood back to the heart. Uh, the veins have valves. That's something else you got to remember. Veins have valves. The reason the veins have valves is to prevent um, the blood from flowing backwards. So the blood that is getting closer to returning to the heart is moving the slowest because it gets its most speed from the heart. So as it gets pumped away from the heart, it's moving very quickly, and the further it gets through its root, the slower it gets before it gets back to the heart. The last one is called capillaries. Capillaries are your microscopic uh, blood vessels that are uh, all over your body. This is where most of your diffusion occurs. Um, oxygen uh, will diffuse from the blood to the cells and CO2 will diffuse from the cells to the blood. This is during the process of uh, cellular respiration or making energy. You need to get oxygen into your cells to make energy, and you need to get the excess of carbon dioxide out of your cells. Um, you also will have some nutrients from the blood that are diffusing into the cells, like glucose. In order for um, ATP to be made, you need oxygen and glucose. Here's a nice picture. Uh, so you can see the arteries have that thick muscular wall around it where the veins don't, they're a little bit thinner. Um, same thing here, this is more of a cartoon. Um, typically in most pictures you're gonna see that the arteries are colored red and the veins are colored blue. Your blood is not ever blue. Let me repeat that, your blood is not ever blue. Your blood can be varying shades of red uh, it will be a darker red when it has less oxygen in it, and it will be a little bit more of a brighter red when it has more oxygen in it, but it is always, always, always some shade of red. Okay, and the capillaries are these little guys in between. The heart is made up of cardiac muscle. It conducts electrical impulses, which is why you see in all those medical shows if, the, if their heart stops, they have to be shocked back into 
into rhythm. The heart is divided into four chambers. You have the tops, top chambers are the right and left atrium. They receive blood returning to the heart. The bottom are the right and left ventricles. They send blood out from the heart. And again, the valves prevent the backflow of blood. So here's a nice picture. Your top ones are the right and the left atrium. Your bottom ones are your ventricles. These are the valves that we're talking about. The blood would flow from the right atrium down into the right ventricle. We do not want the blood to flow back. So that's why these valves are shaped this way. These white parts here are shaped this way so that blood can flow this way but not flow back this way. Um, you may also notice that the right ventricle and the right atrium are on the left side of this picture and the left atrium and ventricle are on the right side of this picture. That is not a mistake. That is on purpose because when you are looking at a picture of a heart, you have to pretend that you are the doctor and that you are looking at your patient's heart. So if your patient was laying on the table in front of you or standing in front of you or sitting in front of you, it would be their right side would be on your left and their left side would be on your right. Okay, so that's why all the pictures that you see of the heart should be the right sides, or the rights are labeled on the left of the picture and the lefts are labeled on the rights of the picture because you have to pretend that it's someone else's heart that you're looking at. So it's their right and their left, not your right and your left. Here's what the valve looks like when it's open. The blood would flow, if you could imagine the blood flowing straight out of your computer screen and at you. And then if the blood tried to flow back through the computer screen, you it wouldn't be able to because it would close up automatically. How the heart beats. This is a little more nitty gritty than you really need to know, but there's basically a two phases of a heartbeat. If you were ever to listen to your heartbeat, you might often hear the ba-bump, ba-bump, ba-bump. So there's two different bumps in there, if you will. Um, so the first one is where the top part of the heart is filling with blood from the body. And then it contracts, just like any other muscle would contract, and it sends blood down into the ventricles. And the second boom that you hear in the boom is when the ventricles contract and they push the blood out to the body. Um, some people need what they call a pacemaker. Um, now everybody has a pacemaker kind of thing, which is a group of cells in the right atrium that receives signals from the body about um, oxygen needs and tells them how, how, how the heart, how fast to contract. Some, oh, excuse me. Some people need to have the, um, have an external pacemaker put in because their little group of cells is not functioning properly. And so they need to put an external one in so that they can, um, that pacemaker can sense all those things for the heart. Um, to take your pulse, the pulse is the alternating expansion and relaxation of the artery wall caused by the contraction of the left ventricle that you can feel where your arteries are close to your skin, which is why we always check our pulse in like our wrist or our neck some place where the arteries are nice and close to your skin. To take a blood pressure, you're going to measure how much pressure is exerted against the vessel walls by the blood. Um, so they're going to be, usually when you get a blood pressure, you get a um, two numbers, a t something over something. A normal healthy adult is usually somewhere around or below 120 over 80. Um, and the first number is what they call the systole. And the second number is the diastole, which are things you don't necessarily need to worry too much about. But Here's the flow of the blood through the body. The blood is in the body, comes in the vena cava, which is a big, the biggest vein in your body, goes into the right atrium, gets pumped down into the right ventricle, the right ventricle pumps it into the pulmonary arteries. Anytime you see the word pulmonary, it means lungs. So pulmonary arteries are bringing blood away from the heart to the lungs. And then the pulmonary veins are bringing the blood back to the heart because it's veins, so it has to be returning to the heart from the lungs. Then it goes into the left atrium, pumps down into the right, uh, the, I'm sorry, the left ventricle. And then that pumps into the aorta, and the aorta is the largest artery in the body 
that is in charge of pumping the blood out to all the different parts of the body. There's another good picture. So there's a lung here and a lung here. The if this was blood coming from the body, the blood would be deoxygenated, which is why it's um, usually blue, although in real life it's not blue, but a lot of times in the cartoons it's blue. Blood. So this is blood basically coming from the upper part of the body. And this down here, which keeps getting covered by my little bar there, is blood coming from the lower part of the body. Um, goes into the right atrium, gets pumped down into the right ventricle. Uh, then it gets pumped into this part right here is the pulmonary um, artery, pulmonary artery, and it will pump blood to each of the lungs, one to the left and one to the right. And then in the lungs, the job of the blood is to pick up oxygen and get rid of CO2, which is why it goes from being blue to red. Usually they show you oxygenated blood is red and deoxygenated blood is blue. Again, that is just in the cartoons in real life. It's red or redder. Um, so the blood gets oxygenated, which why they colored it red. And it comes back from the lungs into now this Arter, or this vein here is actually going to go behind this part, which is why you feel like you lose it right here. But it comes into the heart over here behind the vena cava. Um, and from the left lung, it will come back in here as well to the left atrium. The left atrium will pump it down into the left ventricle. And then the left ventricle will pump it out. And again, it goes behind the pulmonary artery there. But it will pump the oxygenated blood out both to the body, or to the upper part of the body, and it splits here to the lower part of the body. Okay? And then all that oxygen gets used up to make energy, and then um, it goes heads back to the heart to get pumped back to the lungs to get more oxygen. So basically it goes heart to body, heart to lungs, heart to body, heart to lungs. Okay? needs oxygen so it goes to the, to the lungs to pick up oxygen pumps back to the heart to get pushed out to the body oxygen get used gets used up co2 gets collected goes back to the heart to get pushed back to the lungs on either side to go get rid of the co2 and pick up more o2 couple of diseases or issues that you can have in the circulatory system one is called atherosclerosis it's basically fatty deposits or plaque that build up on the walls of the arteries. So you can see here in this picture here, it blocks the blood flow um, and it makes it so that the heart has to work harder. This is a good, nice, normal artery, nice and clear. It's easy for the blood to flow through there. If the blood can only flow through this one little patch down here, it makes it a little bit more difficult for um, the blood to go through, which means your heart has to work harder, which means you're expending more energy that you shouldn't have to be expending. Uh, hypertension is also known as high blood pressure. It also causes the heart to work harder, and it can weaken or damage the heart. And it comes with the increased risk of heart attack and stroke. A heart attack, that's when one of the blood vessels of the heart becomes blocked. So you're talking the, the tissue on the outside of the heart. The heart tissue in that area might die. Um, a lot of times it comes from plaque buildup or atherosclerosis makes it hard for the blood to get through, and part of that heart may die. Um, usually the fix for this is some sort of a bypass surgery, which is where they actually take the arteries and bypass the dead portion and, and reroute the blood so that it can flow more freely. Very dangerous, but usually pretty successful. Um, also, there's something called a stroke. A stroke is when blood clots get stuck in one of the blood vessels leading to the brain. Um, so the same thing that happens in the heart can happen in the brain. It will cause part of the brain tissue to die. Uh, also, no bueno, um, something that hopefully gets caught very quickly. Um, so this is the last slide here. Uh, hopefully you have been filling out your packet while I have been going through this video. Uh, and uh, we will do some more heart-related activities uh, later this week. Hope you're all doing well.